actors and corporate leaders. And most governments will do this if they could. It just so happens the Israelis are really good at it. Right. I mean, what could be a better asset than someone who has all this dirt, right? This quote unquote blackmail on a lot of powerful players. And even Philip Giraldi, who's also a former CIA and military intelligence officer, said this. He said, here is how it would have gone if it were true. Mossad would have exploited Epstein's contacts, arranging their cooperation by having Epstein whining and dining them while flying them off to exotic locations, providing them with women and entertainment. Mm. If they refused to cooperate, it'd be time for blackmail, photos and videos of sex with underage women. So the idea would be that any powerful man, be he tycoon, prime minister, prince or former president or present president, if somebody was to say to them, I have video of you with a 14-year-old girl. You do whatever they wanted. You right. own them. Right. They are in now theory. officially owned in theory. And this is the concern in a case like this because it involves so many. Stay where you are. Uh, let's bring in uh, Ben uh, Swan. Ben, uh, you've been listening to the conversation. What sayeth you? Well, first of all, you guys are touching on some really important points. This, you know... This Maxwell connection is mm. kind of shocking. Um, if you really take a look at, at what's going on with it, Robert Maxwell, the billionaire from the UK who mm. owned uh, a newspaper empire there, there have been allegations and claims for many years. He died in 1991, by the way, in a completely bizarre way. He was standing naked on his yacht named after his daughter and then jumped in or fell into the ocean near the Canary Islands and either drowned or had a heart attack and, and there isn't even a, a clear cause of death for him. The claims have been made over the years that he was Mossad. In fact, the British Foreign Office believed that he was absolutely a double agent and they believed that he was Mossad. Bill he asked the Prime Minister as head of the Security and Intelligence Services to order an immediate inquiry into the alleged relationship between the Israeli intelligence service and Robert Maxwell. Mm -hmm. So if he was Mossad, possibly, um, it's also possible that his daughter is connected to Mossad and that's how she's connected to Epstein because the two have been together for years but don't seem to have any relationship other than her being his fixer, Did which is a very strange relationship for the daughter of a billionaire to, to, to take. Adding something to what you're talking about right now, Maxwell was essentially his only partner, client, Right, so the daughter of Robert Maxwell, Jelaine Maxwell, pretty much acted as this recruiter and even sometimes a participant in this sexual abuse. But I think Ben is absolutely hitting the nail on the head. We have this uh, father of his partner in crime with very strong ties to Mossad, who's been accused of being an Israeli agent by many journalists, including Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Seymour Hirsch. And in a book called Robert Maxwell, Israel Super Spy, that actually really details both his life and death, a very strong case is made. Uh, for the fact that he was actually assassinated by the Mossad after he became a liability. Right. He told me, he said, he said he was such an important person for Israel that they gave him a state funeral and she went on and on and on about his funeral ceremony and she showed me pictures of like what a big deal it was and she said, she said they murdered him. That Israel murdered him. I think that it could have been that he was murdered. But here's something interesting, Rick, That you, because I know you, how you like to go down this rabbit hole, right? Mm -hmm. uh, think about this. Robert Maxwell, after he died, he is, he is a British citizen, was given a state funeral in Israel. The prime minister got up and said that he had done much more for Israel than anyone could ever know this day during his eulogies. He was then buried with full Israeli state honors on the Mount of Olives buried by the president and the prime minister mm. of israel and no less than seven serving or former heads of the mossad so it's quite clear that robert maxwell did perform what the president of israel called at the funeral extraordinary service for israel of course exactly what that service was was buried with him on the mount of olives question now rick is was Ghislaine Maxwell very like her father indeed? Was she performing an extraordinary service? And if so, by whom? Robert Maxwell was, was clearly tied in ways to the state of Israel that go far beyond what the average person would be, in, even the average billionaire. He was connected very, very heavily to that. And Robert Maxwell was the spy master, um, uh, or at least the spy that Ari Ben Menashe was handling. You know, and if you talk about you know, famous spies in, in Israel's history or any history, Ari Ben Menashe's uh, guy, Robert Maxwell, was about the biggest as you can get. He was a famous 
British publisher. Uh, he ran the Daily Mirror. Uh, he was larger than life in many ways. He also maybe leaked uh, very sensitive information to the Russians and to the Israelis. But uh, these guys were big deal intelligence uh, assets, and um, he landed up becoming much more of an asset for the Israelis. And in fact, died uh, maybe at the hands of Mossad, who many people say uh, he had crossed the line. He was threatening to reveal some of the secrets, and he just uh, became uncontrollable. And they've admitted to the public that they took over Robert Maxwell's spying records, operations, and moved that to Florida to Jeffrey Epstein's house. That's been admitted. That's a fact. And it was Robert Maxwell, the famous spy, who introduced uh, Ari ben Menashe to Jeffrey Epstein, to, who introduced Jeffrey Epstein to Israeli military intelligence in, in Israel, and who introduced uh, all of them to a, a very different world. As for his daughter, um, in terms of her involvement, again, her relationship to Epstein is so important because, again, the, here's a woman who seems to go around and recruit these girls for him and gets nothing out of it other than to be like kind of his partner in crime. The black book that he, Epstein has has the names of so many and not just in the United States. We're talking about U.S. politicians. We're talking about, again, his relationship with people like Prince Andrew. The king um, of, of Saudi Arabia, King Bin Salman, is in that book. So he's connected to people all over oh, the no, world. Listen, and people I, I, with I, whom I, the Israelis I, would want I, to connect. Uh, they, they've been involved in our uh, stealing our technology for many, many years. But another way that Israel has affected U.S. foreign policy is through blackmail operations. And I, I would point to Jeffrey Epstein, who was allowed for 30 years to recruit young girls in America from vulnerable, broken homes, as young as 13 years old. And Mr. Epstein, who I believe was a fake billionaire, I do not believe he was a billionaire, I believe he was, he was an actor, an imposter on behalf of the Israeli Mossad. Mr. Epstein then lured powerful, influential American men into his various mansions so that they could rape the girls the sexual acts were videotaped and the videos were sent to Israel for blackmail operations against Americans. So if it were proven, what would the U.S. establishment do? Nothing. Nothing. And too many American leaders have been videotaped by Jeffrey Epstein. There's not going to be any action from the American political establishment. The American ruling class is corrupt and the American people must clean house. I want to thank you Democrats and Republicans for your common support for Israel year after year, decade after decade. Both parties, both political parties in America are controlled by Zionists. There is no choice in America. Epstein and Maxwell were both Israeli spies working for Israeli military intelligence and that they were running a blackmail scheme here in our country in North America targeting our politicians our scientists our academics and they were doing it for military intelligence in Israel would you say she was uh, an, an agent as well was she uh, yes, someone yes. working for oh, Israeli oh, intelligence oh definitely military intelligence as well yes, yes. these guys were serious agents mm -hmm. Uh, and so um, they found the niche for themselves, blackmailing mm -hmm. American and other uh, political figures. For the Israelis? Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard for people to understand why an is Israel would want to get blackmail on an American. Uh, I'm asking a question that I, I can answer it quite probably, but, I'm, but you know, for most people it's hard for them to think about it, Israel as being uh, blackmailing their leaders in the United States. It's a very... Uh, it was quite a fair uh, demo. He made sure these girls were underage. You really didn't want the stories to come out about how they were blackmailing American politicians. No. Gilan said they were working on all these Israeli charities. Uh -huh. And I remember thinking, oh, that's weird. And she was like, you don't understand our loyalty to Israel, Maria. You don't understand our loyalty. 